just a quick good morning to everyone on this good day online only. We are sad, which is life after an ice storm. Uh, I don't think any of us really expected this. And many of our friends, unfortunately, still have no power, including at the church. So we gather online um, and we are glad to be together. Those of us who are able, those who might watch this uh, later in its recording. We begin and we'll have a little further uh, introduction after uh, this hymn. A uh, spirit open my heart will sing verses one and three. Hey, Reed, I think you're going to have to sing this because we don't have a recording of this. Oh, spirit open my heart to the joy and pain and of living. living as you love me, I love in receiving and in giving. Spirit open my heart. God replace my stony heart with a heart that's kind and tender. Oh. Ooh. To your oh, grace I now surrender. Be. Spirit, open my the heart. Grace, I now surrender to the joy and pain of living. As you love, may I love in receiving and in giving. Spirit, open my heart. Okay. <laughs> Everything Thank you. Is... Thank you, Beverly. Yeah, the uh, slides are coming in very s slow for me, I guess. Reed, do you want to do the next verse or? Uh... Uh, yes, I've been trying to read the slides, but they're coming in rather slow. Maybe just move on. Okay. Oh, well, that's a shame. And Beverly, you did a good job. Sorry, I, I was trying to help. No, you sure did. That was beautiful. <laughs> okay. So, Gary, if we we'll move, if there's another welcome screen or... All right. So 
Friends, we gather again for this special Good Friday service. Um, so grateful to Gary for uh, running our slides today. And uh, it's all been a bit of a, a rush to put these things uh, together so that we could do an online only service. I'm so appreciative uh, for all the help. And uh, we are likely uh, hoping that we have some Eglise St. Clair uh, members joining us today. Uh, they don't have a Good Friday service and uh, Stefan Vermette asked if uh, he might refer St. Clair members to our Good Friday service. And Gary uh, has been uh, glad to offer a welcome to them, special welcome, Gary. Alors, un accueil tout particulier ce matin à nos amis de l'Église Saint-Claire qui nous ont rejoints sur Zoom. Merci de votre présence parmi nous. C'est un plaisir pour nous autres. So I welcome you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, whose last hours of life we will relive through the words of John's Gospel. In those hours, we encounter a life and ministry suddenly gone very wrong. From the triumph of entering Jerusalem amidst waving palms and a cold strewn road, Jesus is hit hard by the ruling authorities, betrayed by his closest friends and abandoned to the cruel punishment of the cross. We start our worship, however, in a place of hope. We, like the crowds 2,000 years ago, were mesmerized by Jesus. His words, his actions, we want to follow him. But too soon, when the story changes, we ask of them and of ourselves, was there no one who would stand with him right up until the end? Could no authority or government be found that would stick up for the rights of one who preached only peace, who counseled only love. Friends, these questions continue to haunt us 2000 plus years later. The cruelties of which they speak still live in violence and death, but also buried deep within us. In the stories we tell this morning and the actions we will take. Together, may we be able to touch these at Easter so our wounds and the wounds of the world might one day also be healed and love and justice restored. So we move into our worship. Our service, once again, is something of a meditation on the cross, which in ritual will become for us like the body of our Lord. We will uh, be able to uh, watch and uh, unfortunately not participate this year in uh, the cross becoming like the body where we will uh, both ritually um, cast stones to be par part of our confessions. Uh, we'll have to cast them virtually from our screens this morning. And also uh, to participate in the caring of the uh, for burial. But fear not, we'll also join uh, with others around the world as we look forward to the joy coming in just two days from now. Uh, we pray in person, but we'll update you about that also later. So let us come into this place and this time, this sacred moment together as uh, we worship. And we do so as we honor the land on which we are uh, living and worshiping today. Rosemary has kindly offered to uh, offer these words for us. Rosemary. 
Thank you. We gather on lands which hold a long and rich history of occupation and stewardship by Indigenous peoples for millennia through to the present day. Indigenous peoples such as those from the Haudenosaunee Nation and the Anishinaabeg Nation have deep, strong historical ties to this land. Montreal, known as the Odage to the Haudenosaunee and as Moniang to the Anishinaabeg, has long served as a site of meeting and exchange among various Indigenous groups. We acknowledge and thank the diverse peoples whose presence marks this territory on which peoples of the world now gather. And would you join me with me responsively in our call to worship? Friends, in the shadow of our suffering is the suffering of Jesus. In the shadow of our weakness is the vulnerability, is the vulnerability. of the Christ. In the shadow of our pain is the God, the God who cried out. We are never rejected. We are never left alone. And we'll sing when I survey the wondrous cost, number 149, if you have a hymnal at home, verses 1 and 4. And Michelle, would you please unmute and offer our prayer of approach? Let us pray together with Michelle. Prayer of approach. Holy one, awaken, awaken us, us one once more, more to our trials and deferrals. Help us notice when our eyes are that of others, are filled with tears, Embolden us when our bodies are trembling in fear. Strengthen us when we cannot bear our or another's pain. Remind us that dawn will come again. Remind us we are yours. Amen. Yes, friends, we begin the time of reading stories of the passion of Jesus, and we do so from John's Gospel. And we do so in the awareness that because of John's particular time and place of writing, uh, it was an interest of his community. They were experiencing a real rift with their Jewish friends and neighbors, 
the people that they had been in synagogues with, uh, and of course the Gentiles that were then uh, flocking into the Christian movement. So the way John uh, pitches his story, it often uses language that is very separating between Christ Christian believers and, and Jewish believers. Of course, Jesus was a Jew. His disciples were all uh, Jewish. And John's gospel, unfortunately, this, this, this separation has been used over the centuries uh, to provide a foundation for uh, anti-Semitism, acts of uh, cruelty and violence and separation uh, against Jewish people of faith. So I feel it's our responsibility. I mean, we love John's gospel. There's so much beauty to it. But when we come to the passion stories, I think it's important to name the history of uh, this particular gospel and how it has been misused to uh, justify um, uh, violence and, and discrimination against a Jewish people, unfortunately, which is ongoing and even we hear uh, a rising problem today, including here in Montreal. You might have heard a synagogue was spray painted with many different uh, Nazi symbols uh, just recently in uh, not too far from where I live. So we use these scriptures gently today, and I have taken the liberty to alter in certain places, uh, very gently alter certain words, I think, to convey a meaning uh, that is perhaps more true uh, to the actual circumstances of the time and a little bit less of that separation that John and his community were no doubt feeling. Um, and yet we, we, we must not uh, use um, every single word perhaps uh, today because of that history I've mentioned. So thank you for hearing that story. And we begin with our first reading. Uh, I believe that will be Carlos. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, for whom are you looking? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, for whom are you looking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you, I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. I am, am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? And we extinguish one candle.
and we sing. The second lesson is taken from the 18th chapter of John, beginning at verse 12. So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish authorities that if Jesus was getting too popular, it was better to have one person die for the nation than have Rome take away their power as priests and members of the governing council, the Sanhedrin. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and they were standing round it and warming themselves. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off asked, did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, the cock crowed. And I extinguish another candle. Bitter was the night, Bitter was the thought night, thought the cock would crow, thought the forever. cock would crow Bitter forever. Was the night, Bitter was the night, the break of day. the 
break of day. Saw you passing by. Saw you passing by. Told them all I didn't Told them all know. I didn't know. Was you the night was the night before the break of day. Before the break of day. Told them all a lie. Told them all a lie. And I told it three and times over. And I told it three times over. The night was the night before the break of day. Before the break of day. What did Judas do? Sold you for a bag Sold of him silver. For a bag of silver. The night was the night. Before the, night. the break of day. Before the break of day. What did Judas do? Did Judas do? Hanged himself upon the himself upon an old up the night. Was the night. Before the break of day. Before the break of day. Was the night. Was the night. Our third reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verses 28 to 40. Then Jesus was taken to Caiaphas, the pilot had squatted. It was early in the morning. The Jewish authorities themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, if this man was not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The authorities replied, we are not permit but anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered his headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, Am I not a Jew? Am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers will be fighting to keep me from being handed over to you. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is true? After he had said this, Pilate went out to the gathered authorities again and told them, I find no case against him. But you have a custom that I will leash someone from you for you at the Passover. Do you want me to wish for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Please sing along with me. 
Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Our fourth reading is from John chapter 19, verses 1 to 16. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on its, his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and crucify him. I have no case against him. They answered him, we have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the son of God. Now, when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but Jesus' enemies called out, if you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the stone pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the crowd, here is your king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but the emperor. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to his soldiers to be crucified. And we extinguish another candle. Friends, so this would be the moment if we were in person that we would be invited to come forward to take a rock or rocks and to cast them upon the cross as a, a way of uh, embodying um, our own uh, sin, the mistakes we've made of omission and commission, and we acknowledge are being in those crowds and god forbid part of the the perpetrators uh who did this to jesus 
Um, we, we can't ritually enact that, uh, but maybe we can just sort of throw our stones into the screen if you're willing to as a symbol of our complicity. We don't wish it to be that way, but we live in systems that benefit some more than others. Uh, racism and sexism and war, um, the degradation of the earth, all of these things that some of us benefit from and others and generations in the future uh, will have a harder time because of what we did or didn't do in our own time. Thank you for your understanding and uh, we continue. Next reading is from John 19, 17 to 37. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There he was crucified and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many people read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priest said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the Roman soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to, to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified man broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. 
these things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. And I extinguish the final candle. And would you sing with me verses one, two, and five of Were You There, number 144 in the hymnal if you have one at home or on screen. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there? when they nailed him to the tree were you there were you there when they laid him in the tomb were you there were you there when they laid him in the tomb Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there? A reading from John 19, verses 38 to 42. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, a Jewish man of wealth and high importance, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of what his rich and powerful friends would have done if they had known. He asked Pilate to let him take the, away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed the body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to Jewish burial custom. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden 
there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so because it was the day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. And if you would join in in the bolded lines. O oh God, as Jesus once thirst upon the cross, so we thirst for the living water of his presence. In so many ways, we deny this living presence deep within our hearts. In our denial, we participate in the crucifying of the dream of your kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven. O oh God, we do believe in this dream. Yet we forget again and again that you are there, that this is your world. We forget that we are called to be co-creators with you of a just world, characterized by unconditional love and grace. As we acknowledge our failings to live your dream into being, allow us to prepare Jesus's body for what we know is to come. By this act, May we touch the places of our own pain. May we begin to transform it with the fragrance of hope. Come at a sadness from a river broken hearted let rescue begin come find your mercy O oh sinner come near earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal so lay down your Earth 
has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Friends, there is no part of life which Jesus has not visited. There is no death not experienced by the Christ. Let us all say, thanks be to you, O Christ. In faith, we may leave here all that is deathly in our lives believing that it will be absorbed into the body of Christ, which waits with arms stretched wide to gather in all our reality, that it and we may be healed, forgiven, and renewed. And we all say, thanks be to you, O Christ. And we sing. Stay with me, remain. 
It is time to leave this place. Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And we all say, in faith, we also commend ourselves into the hands of a loving God. And we offer the prayer that Jesus teaches us in English and then in French as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Notre Père qui es aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite sur la terre comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain de ce jour. Pardonne-nous nos offenses comme nous pardonnons aussi à ceux et celles qui nous ont offensés. Et ne nous laisse pas entrer en tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal. Car c'est à toi qu'appartiennent le règne, la puissance et la gloire pour les siècles des siècles. Amen. Friends, this is the end of our time together. Let us go in peace, embraced in the love of Christ. Walk deeply into your own lives with all of their frailties. And discover as you do that in spirit and in truth, you are walking towards the joy of Easter Day. Amen. Keep it open.